Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. And we thank you because you want to impact us and you want to help us and take us to that height you've planned for our life. And we pray as we encourage one another, challenge one another, I pray you minister to us. You will help us to regain our vision and also to dream again and to get to the heights you've planned for us. Thank you, Father, because you've answered. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. I will be talking about dare to dream again. I would like, I'm a teacher, and I like to always have response from my audience when I teach. So I would like us to call us together. Dear to dream again. Dear to dream again. Yes. If you look from creation, we can go back to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. I like that part. It says, Subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God created us to dream big. He did his own part by creating the world, putting everything there. And he created us to take it further, to be part of people creating things. And so as children of God, we had to dream big. We had to participate in the process. And in this act of creating, innovating, inventing, and improving lives. Let's look at Psalm 37, verse 4. It says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Now, when we talk about dream, what are we talking about? What are dreams? It's all about envisaging a future you desire. In that Psalm 37 verse 4, it says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. If you don't have any desire, what is the Lord going to give you? So when we're talking about dreams, it's about everything in the future you desire. And if you look at the, the letters of the word dream, we can look at it one by one. D, you are desiring something. What are your desires? That's the question to us this morning. What do you desire? Number two, how? Reflection beyond the present. You, you can't be dreaming about a reality. Once something is a reality, it is done already. A dream is about things that is beyond the present. Reflection beyond the present. What are your reflections beyond the present? He, the envisioned future. What is the future you are envisioning? So when we talk about dream, of course, naturally we sleep and we dream. But we are talking about dream in terms of goals and vision now. So what is the vision future you have? A, aspiration. An ambition. What are your aspirations? What are your ambition? What do you want to become? What are you striving to achieve? And him, mental image of something great or ideal you want to achieve. And that's what we mean by dream. Dreaming, desiring, reflecting beyond the present, envisioning and striving for a better future, aspiring. Setting goals, things you want to achieve, forming a mental image of it. Because if you cannot see the picture at times, it becomes a bit difficult for you to strive towards it. You want to see the picture. You have a mental image of something great or idea you want to achieve. And when you see the picture, it's set before you, you begin to pursue it to get there. I pray the Lord will help us. We'll be able to fulfill our dreams in Jesus' name. So, why do people stop dreaming? Because if you are saying there to dream again, that means maybe one way or the other, you were dreaming before and you stopped dreaming. It's possible, it happens that people stop dreaming. There are several examples. 
people stop dreaming. So why? There could be disillusionment. You've dreamt before. You had great vision. You wanted to do something great. You started out and pursuing something, and failure came. You felt, well, all this thing they are saying, maybe it's not for me. Two, fear of failure. You are afraid of failing. What if it doesn't work out? What if I tried and I failed? That could be one of the reasons why people stop dreaming. Negative influences all around you. You are surrounded by people that are not having dreams. And so you think that you also you should be like them. I remember after the Lord told us something at the time, told us about having an eaglet, that an eaglet was put among uh, chickens. So all the eaglet, eaglet could think about is to be picking things on the floor, never knowing that it has, it has the strength to fly, to fly and soar high. So negative influences could also stop people from dreaming. The limited beliefs, maybe because of your past experiences, you feel that I cannot go beyond this level, and so you limit yourself. Limited beliefs could be part of reasons why people stop dreaming. Lack of motivation. Whether motivation from within or from without. Lack of motivation could be one of the reasons why people stop dreaming. Shifting priorities. Oh, you've gotten to a certain point in life and feel like, no, it's no longer, at this age, I don't need to dream again. At this age, I think I just have to just manage until I, I, I hand my raise. No. Shifting priorities. Contentment with the status quo. External pressures. Loss of passion. I will consider some of these points and expatiate on them. So talking about the solution meant, life experiences or setbacks or repeated failures can lead to a sense of delusionment or loss of hope. You've met people that will tell you the stories, what happened. I've tried this, I've tried that, and I don't think this is meant for me. As a teacher, I remember some of my students on campus who think they cannot master something. Let me give an example, like programming. And so, spending four or five years, master this, this is what I've come to learn. They think this is not for me. But you know, after finishing school and they're looking for a job, they're not able to get the job. They go back to enroll in a programming school to learn. Or they came to the university to study. And because of whatever reason, thinking they could not achieve it. Now when reality of life came and they discovered that they could not get a job, they go back to enroll and learn. And eventually some of them make it and they're able to do it. Why were they not able to do it before? Not because they could not do it, but because they felt that I've tried, I'm not getting it, so maybe it's not for me. So, lack of life experiences, setbacks, repeated failures can lead to a sense of disillusionment, disillusionment or loss of hope. When people encounter obstacles and challenges, they may start to doubt their ability to achieve great things, which can dampen their dreams. Of course, challenges will come, but that should not dampen you. I remember two days ago when a forum discussing about the Nigerian Startup Act, and a woman said, that she started a company. First time she failed. Second time she failed. Third time she failed. And the fourth time she started making progress. And that fourth time was about seven and a half years ago. And she's recon somebody recognized today doing well in that business. But when she did it the first time, she failed. The second time she failed. The third time she has said, that, no, this is the end. I don't think this, is, this will work for me. That will have been the end of the story. We will not be reading about her today or hearing about her. Negative influences. Surrounding oneself with negative or unsupportive people can hinder one's ability to dream again. Who are your companions? What do you listen to? Especially youth on social media. What are the stories, the videos you watch? What are they teaching you? What are you learning from them? The movies you watch, what are you learning from such movies? Surrounding oneself with negative or unsupportive people can hinder one's ability to dream again. Also, constant criticism or lack of encouragement from others may lead individuals to adopt a more pessimistic outlook on their aspirations. 
It can happen from anywhere. It could be in your school when people start telling you you don't know anything. And as you are hearing every time, criticism, people telling you you don't know this, or maybe you do something, you fail, and you begin to, even your parents at times, it happens at home, they will tell you, they say some things, and that begin to form your thoughts. Begin to impress, that begin to come to your mind that maybe I cannot do this. Everybody is saying that I cannot do it. Constant criticism or lack of encouragement from others may lead individuals to adopt a more pessimistic outlook on their aspirations. I mentioned earlier limiting beliefs. Deep-rooted limiting beliefs about oneself and one's capabilities can hold individuals back from dreaming about great things. When one feels stuck or lacks the drive to pursue one's goal, one might lose interest in dreaming about great things altogether. It happens. We are not, but vision looks up. Vision looks up. And that is where we are here, why we are here today. To look up. To look up. To dream. When I read the passage in, the, in Genesis, God tells us that we should subdue the hearts. Several resources are created. When God created the world, there was no aeroplane. If men did not subdue the heart, they would not have created the aeroplane. When God created the world, there was no car. If men did not subdue the heart and use what God has given to them and dream of things, we would not be having cars today. And so God has given it to us to subdue the heart. To subdue the heart. So, how do we start to dream again? If you can show the slide, please. That I have, in the slide, I have some images that are having like four steps. You have to begin to think. Begin to aspire. Begin to reflect the kind of future, the kind of things you want to achieve. Now, the problem is not about reflecting. Many people have reflected, many people have dreamt. What happened is between the dream and the realization, materialization of it, that's where the problem comes. And so, it's like you are now dreaming, and you are in step two. You can see that vision. You can see that goal. You can see that beautiful image, like I said earlier, mental image of what you want to achieve. But there's a ladder between you and that image. There's a ladder, and there are steps to follow. And you have to be consistent. Some, they'll take step one and step two, and they come down. And that's where it stops. Some will fall several times, but they continue to climb and climb again. And eventually, they get to the top. And eventually, they look at the list of their dreams, things they've written down, and they can see ticked, 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 and ticked. So it takes a process. It takes a journey to dream again and to get the dreams achieved. So how do you start to dream again? Define your goals. Define your goals. Visualize success. You have to be able to have a mental image of what it means to succeed. Visualize it. Then you create a plan. So you can dream, you can visualize it, but I told you between the goal, the dream, and that point where you are checking the list, there is a ladder. There are steps to take. So you create a plan. You develop positive habits. You may create a plan, and you try to follow the plan, and eventually you think, no, 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 this is too stressful. I need to stop this. You develop positive habits. You stay persistent. You are persistent about it. You keep doing it. You surround yourself with positivity. There are so many negativity all around us today. Bad news here and there. Bad examples, especially young people you keep hearing. You know, people doing all those kind of money rituals. Are they young? I mean, looking for money at all costs. And you hear a lot of things around. But what you need to do is to surround yourself with positivity. Continuous learning. 
You know, they've told us what you learned today, after six months or one year, what you are learning may be outdated. You are in the university studying a course four years. Before you graduate, what you are studying may no longer be relevant. Yes. So, you need to continuously learn. Take calculated risk. Many of the people that have achieved great things, they take risk. A lot of risk. But be careful, not just taking risk anyhow. Calculated risk. You can't do great things without taking risk. Or taking some risk. You have to dare to do some things. Stay adaptable. Practice gratitude. Let me explain some of these points. When I say define your goals and visualize your success, what am I saying? Clearly articulate what you want to achieve and write them down. It's better to write them down. Clearly articulate what you want to achieve and write them down. Make your goals specific. We've been taught about smart goals. Make your goals specific, measurable. I remember a professor of mine told us, whatever you cannot measure, you cannot improve. Whatever you cannot measure, you cannot improve. Measurement helps you to be able to improve on something. When it's at stage one, then you are thinking of how to take it to stage two. So make your goal specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. At the same time, you have to be ambitious. Because if every time you are just looking at it, okay, this, only thing, this is what I can achieve, and you don't dream beyond what you have the ability to do, you may, make, you may be able to achieve what you plan to achieve, but you may not do great things. So at times you have to be ambitious and kind of let that show in some of the goals you are defining. I remember at the time there was an exam I wanted to write, a professional exam. Of course, I look at the domain, I feel confident about the domain, but I just told myself, this exam is 100, 100 I want to get. I want to surpass whatever record they have, and I want to get 100 by 100. And it's a very tough exam. So I prepared. But because I've said that I'm going to get 100, I didn't get 100. I got 91 or 92, I can remember. 91, 92. But what I could gather from that was because I set in my mind, I deci decided, I determined, yeah, that I'm going to get 100, 100. I was close to 100. If I said, I just, if I said in my heart that I just wanted, and hey, 70 is fine, just 70 is fine. Maybe I've landed in 55. So at times, aim higher beyond what you can do and be a bit ambitious, but not over ambitious. I remember my secondary school days, this quote, when we were at the assembly, the principal would tell us to repeat some quotes, and those things helped us. He said, be ambitious. He who aims at the sky shoots higher than he who aims at the roof. If you aim at the roof, you may not go beyond this level, but if you aim at the sky, you eventually go above the roof. Take time each day to visualize yourself achieving your goals and living the life you desire. And it's wise. Says, dare to dream, then decide to do. It's not sufficient to dream. You need to decide to do. Create a plan and develop positive habits. Break down your big goals into smaller, manageable steps. You break it down. What are the steps or the sub-goals? And how do I achieve them? In organizations, when you are planning for the year, you come up with objectives. You come up with action plans. You come up with indicators. How do we, what, what are the objectives we have? What are the plans, the action plans to achieve it? The indicators, what tells us that we're achieving it? What does success mean? How do you know that you succeed? Break down your goals in smaller and manageable steps. Create a detailed action plan to work towards your objectives. Regularly review and update your plan as needed. You review it. It's not a problem to fail. The real problem is failing to rise when you fail. That's the real problem. Many people that have done great things and are still doing great things they have failed several. If you ask them, they'll tell you several. I've told you about a woman that started a company 
three times she failed. Eventually, the fourth time, she began to make it. So it's not about failing that's a problem. So at times, you need to review and update your plan as needed. Cultivate habits that support your goals. Develop good habits. Habits that support your goals. Learning new skills, networking, meeting with the right set of people. Cultivate habits that support your goals. Stay persistent and commit to lifelong learning. You need to be committed to your vision, to your dream. Of course, there will be obstacles, but don't let that discourage you. Don't let that discourage you. There will be obstacles. In fact, there are times that so many things will happen that you just think that it's like, this is not for me. I can tell you that when you are at that stage, that's a breakthrough ahead. That is the reason. At that stage where it's like everything is working against you, there's a breakthrough close by. And that's the point you need to encourage yourself and to put in more effort and move forward. Learn from failures and keep moving forward. Failure is not a problem. It's just that you are learning why you should not do things. In my own profession, we write proposals to get research grants to do some research. I read something recently. A woman said that most of the proposals written, at times just about 3% of them get funded. So you have written several proposals seeking for funds to do research and most often maybe 3% or less than 5% will get funded. So if you look at it, if you are, that means if you are writing 100 proposals, 5% of 100 proposals what? That's five. So if after writing the first one, the person was not funded and was discouraged, wrote the second one and stopped. So if you look at it averagely, it means that it is one out of 20 proposals the person has written that got funded. So failing first time, failing second time, stopping means that's the end. But failure means you learn what did you do wrong and how can you improve and you keep pushing. Spend time with people who uplift and support you. Keep learning and growing. Seek knowledge and expertise in areas related to your goals. We have to do a lot of learning, especially in this generation. Knowledge is increasing. Things are changing fast. About two or three years ago, I was invited to a, I mean, kind of a forum to discuss, and I told the developers, software developers there, I said, very soon, machine will be writing software for you. So if you're a programmer, and all your focus is about coding, you need to go beyond that. Because very soon, you have machines that will be writing the code for you. One of them was there, thinking, no, it's not possible. I can, we are not yet there. We are not there yet. Last year, ChatGPT came up, came out. Open AI. And the machine is now writing code. If you tell the machine, I want a software that can do this, that can do that, can do that, it can start writing the code for you. So keep learning and growing. Things are changing fast, especially in this generation. Seek knowledge and expertise in areas related to your goals. Education and self-improvement are crucial for achieving greatness. I love this quote by Harry Longfellow. And like I said, while I was in secondary school, I learned this through our principal then. The heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, were toiling upward in the night. There's no other secret. You can't be lazy and expect to do great things. It's not possible. Heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight. They don't just jump at it and it happens. No. But they, while their companions slept, were toiling upward in the night. What do you do with your time? Aldolf Monod said, between the great things we cannot do and the small things we will not do, the danger is that we shall do nothing. Oh, this one is too big for me. I cannot do it. This one is too small. I need something better. What happens? You do nothing. Some are looking for a job. Oh, no, no, no. I want a big job. Oh, this job is too much. This uh, advert, I don't think I, I, I can 
qualify for this, so I don't need to ap apply. Oh, this job is too small. This one, I can't go for this. I'm a graduate. Eventually, it stays there, doing nothing. Between the great things we cannot do and the small things we will not do, danger is that we shall do nothing. Be open to adjusting your approach if needed. Circumstances may change. And being flexible can help you navigate through unexpected challenges. As you dream, be flexible as well. You need to adapt, yes, but don't lose focus of what your dream is. Now, there's another important thing that can help you when you are dreaming. Appreciate little success. Practice gratitude. God has helped you to achieve one small thing. Thank God for him. Appreciate it and speak about it. Speak about it. Share the testimony. Talk to people about it. Be grateful for what you have, you have and the progress you make along the way. Gratitude can improve your overall well-being and keep you motivated to pursue your dreams. I remember any time I want to collaborate with people to do things, I'll tell them, let's look for the low-hanging fruits. Because the little result you get first motivates you to do more. Then you work and work and work, there's no result. And you begin to think, is there a light? Is there a path in this direction? So when you achieve some little things, be, be grateful. And that helps you, gives you that encouragement to do more. Staff your distractions and feed your focus. Several trains distract us today. Staff those distractions. Don't feed on them. Don't spend time on those distractions. Feed your focus. We'll conclude soon by just looking at some examples of successful dreamers. Some people that dreamt and they succeeded. I'll look at some from the Bible and also from my own time. David. I like the life of David. He had his own mistakes, but the fact that he doesn't allow failure to stop him. He doesn't allow obstacles to stop him. In the Psalms, you will say, the enemy are this, the enemy are that. At the end of the day, you say, Lord, I trust in you. That is it. Obstacles are there, Lord, I trust in you. I look forward for greater things. And if you look at the record, I like this verse about David. He said, he said he was cunning in playing and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. He combined everything together. Talent, uh, practicing and making himself very skillful, nice person, comely, and also the Lord is with him. That is a factor you cannot remove. As you are dreaming, don't remove the Lord. Let that phrase, the Lord is with him, let it be also said about you, that the Lord is with you. And that gives you greater success. Another thing we saw about him, when they attacked Ziggler, Ziggler, and they've taken everything away, his wife, the, the, the children, everybody, everybody was discouraged. In fact, people were thinking of stoning him. But the Bible said that he encouraged himself. And he was able to think, let me go to the Lord and ask for direction. So, like I said, there are reasons why you may want to stop dreaming. But like David, encourage yourself and ask, go to the Lord again and ask for direction. And you start dreaming again. Jabez. I love the story. Not so much was said about him, but the feel, the little thing written about him was very deep. You may think that what is dreaming about Jabez, when somebody realizes that my life is not where it's supposed to be, that's the beginning of dreaming. So you realize that I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Something is wrong with me. Oh, my parents called me this. And that's the reason. He did not stop and say, yes, I know it. Since my parents said this, uh, well, that is why. So let me, it's, it's fate. That's, that is what I've, I was born to be. No. He went to God and changed the story. 
Jabez went beyond being honorable. He was more honorable. Not just honorable, more honorable. What about Uzziah? I like inventions. I like people that are creating things. And so when I saw this verse in the scripture, I loved it. He said, and he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones withal. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously apt till he was strong. He invented things. And today, we should be the one inventing. We should not leave it to the unbelievers. We should be the one creating new things. Because when we create new things, we create it for good use. Not for a negative use. Because the fear of God is for everything else. So we should not leave all the inventions to unbelievers. We should be the scientists creating great things. And I believe the Lord will help us. Johnny Erickson Tada. At the age of 17, I had complete paralysis of both arms and legs. It was almost, she was thinking of committing suicide. But she did not allow that to stop her. She learned how to paint with a brush between her teeth. She visited 47 countries, and she has written over 50 books. Somebody having complete paralysis of both arms and legs, I've done that. What have you done? As we conclude, I'll just say these three things, and we'll pray. You can never be stopped until you stop yourself. You can never be stopped until you stop yourself. When you stop yourself, that's when you stop. Nancy Mandela says, a winner is a dreamer who never gives up. And I will say, you are as big as your dream. Let's pray and ask God for grace. Let's rise up and talk to God that God should give us grace. If you have been discouraged, pray that God will encourage you. The Lord will help you to dream again. Maybe you'll be the next person. Your startup, maybe the startup will be hearing about in the next two, three, four, five years. But you have to start from somewhere. Pray that God will help you. That the discouragement of the past will be gone. And that God will give you grace. Our Father and our God will thank you once again for encouraging us that we can dream again. Lord, we pray that, Father, the courage we need, the inner strength to dream, and every grace we need to achieve our dreams, give unto us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you've answered our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed.
everybody praise the Lord. It's a joy to be with you. I'm so glad I'm here with you and to plant the seed of greatness in your life. Impact in your life. Rising above, going beyond anything you ever dreamed about. You dare to dream. You dare to do. And you dare to reach the destination. Let's pray. Father, reverently we come to you. Such a day like this, when you touch, transform, change the destiny of everyone for the better. Lord, I pray every word, every sentence will bring impact to every life in Jesus' name. We're beginning at the first wrong of the ladder today. And we're going to climb and climb to the height you have ordained for everyone. Here, everywhere, in our country, in our continent, Africa, beyond to the west, everywhere. Take everyone up, 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 Higher in Jesus' name. It is done. We thank you because there will be a realization. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can see that in the blessing of the Lord. We're coming to Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said, unto him if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth if thou can only believe number one you believe in god the creator of the whole universe and your own creator if you can only believe in him all things are possible to him to her who believes number two is goodness that god is good he never does evil if you believe in his goodness all things are possible to him who believes if you believe in his grace the grace unlimited that takes the lowest to the highest. The grace unlimited that takes the poor to the height of prosperity. If thou canst only believe his grace, all things are possible to him who believes. If you believe in your goal. When you have a goal, if you have a double mind, can I, can I not? Should I, shouldn't I? If you have a goal and you focus on that goal, you believe in that goal, you believe that you and the goal, you are one, inseparable. He that believeth, he has a goal, and he believes in that, all things are possible to him that believeth. You believe his guidance. He guides us. He guides us, and he guides us to the thing that will follow and to get our destiny. If thou canst only believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. If you believe in growing, in growth, if you believe that you have not reached your climax, if you believe that you are growing, and you are going to grow to that higher level and there is nothing that will stop you he that believeth you believe that there is growth and that you are marked for growth 
and you are destined for growth. To him that believeth, all things are possible. Jesus has told us about the Almighty God, about his greatness. If you believe in his greatness, there is nothing he cannot do. There's nothing he cannot do in your life. There's nothing he cannot do in my life. There is nothing and there is no height he cannot take me to, take you to. If you believe in his greatness, all things are possible to him that believeth. Readjust your life. Readjust your concept and readjust your disposition and believe you are going up. If you believe, you will pray. If you don't believe, you won't pray. I believe. Number one, I pray. Number two, I believe. So I plan. If I truly believe in God, if I truly believe in his goodness, if I truly believe in his grace, if I truly believe in the goal, if I truly believe in his guidance, if I truly believe in growth, if I truly believe in the greatness to come, I pray, I plan, I prepare, I prepare. You prepare yourself if the farmer only prayed, but he didn't prepare the seed, he didn't prepare, cultivate the land, nothing will come out. I believe, so I prepare. I believe, so I pursue. You pursue because you believe that is the destination there, that is the goal there, and you are a go-getter. Goal-getter, you are going to get it. Because of that, I pursue. I believe, so I persevere. What if Joseph had given up? No use because nobody supports me. Nobody agrees with me. But I perceive. Number six, I pay the price for the price. I pay the price. It may be doing exercise. It may be running every morning. It may be that you tax yourself and you say, people like us, if that is where I am going, there's a price to pay. And I believe so. I prayed the price for the price. And then I believe so. I possess. I came to talk to possessors. You will possess. We're looking at three things. Number one, number one, the boundaries of limitation for the natural youth. What is the boundary? What makes the limitation for a youth, a natural youth? And so he cannot go beyond that, the bounds, the fence, and the perimeter that holds him down and he cannot go beyond number two is the breaking of limits for newborn youths the breaking of limits for the newborn youth number three is the breakthrough it's coming the breakthrough beyond limitations as noble youths let's come to number one Number one, the boundaries of limitation for the natural youth. Now, natural people, men, women, boys, girls, natural people, the people who do not have anything added from heaven to them, or except what mama, papa had given them through the genes and the chromosomes, if that's all you have, and you are natural, you have boundaries, you have limitation. Uh, let's look at Romans here now. Romans chapter 7, reading from verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, natural. The way I came out, my mother 
and the thing I carry, I'm carnal. And it says, sold under sin. Look at verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, I can set goals. I'm reaching there. I'm going there. It says, what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that's what I do. Then in verse 16, it says, Even I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. What's my problem then? Verse 17. In verse 17, now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. A man that is natural. The woman that is natural. There are a lot of things, of course, that we do. For eyes, for walk about, we move about, we look, we see, we even understand some things, but when it goes beyond that limit, we are lost. The thing that ought to make us arise and move up to the mountain top. That's what we're looking for. And that is what we lack. It says, it's not me. There is something that dwells in me that when I will arise and then rise to higher ground, that thing like the force of gravity pulls me down. Uh, let me quickly tell you seven things that hinder us. The seven things that limit us, the cause of limitation. Number one is the corruption of life. We come to this line and we'll see that the order of the day and the thing is the corruption in the world. Anywhere we go, the corruption is there. That holds us down. The corruption of life. Number two is the contamination of the lawless. Any community you go, there are lawless people there. They don't have any goal. They don't have any mind to succeed. They don't have anywhere they are going. They are there. They are there. In society, they are there. They are always there. And you can be contaminated by them. That even though you had high hopes before. And you are going through. You are going to get to that destination. Nation. If you are surrounded by those uh, people, lawless people, there is the contamination of the lawless. Number three is the coldness of the lukewarm. The coldness of lukewarmness. Any excitement you have, you come from a meeting like this, and with everything you have, there's an excitement, and there is a hope, and there's a desire, and I want to get there. I learned of Mr. So and so, he got there. Mrs. So and so, she got there. The God of grace and the God of heaven, he will help me as you come out and you meet, uh, you know, the cold lukewarm people they don't have anywhere they are going they don't have anything they are going to achieve and they say ah, what happened to you where are you coming from book 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 reading 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 planning sketching and doing all those things what happened they want to bring coldness to your excitement they will not succeed <laughs> number four is the constitution of laziness. The constitution. Uh, you understand constitution? Uh, that, that's our mind. That's our habit. That's our life. And it's like we like to sit down. We like to browse the internet. We like to see all those pictures and everything uh, in the social media. We want to listen to useless news that doesn't concern us and that constitution of laziness does not allow us to concentrate on the essentials of life those things bring limitation into our lives number five is the companionship with loafers loafers they are here and there they are 
up and down their toe and fro, and they have nothing doing. They have nothing achieving. They come to knock on your door. Are you there? Are you there? Uh, have you heard? Then they begin that uh, conversation. We must have a goal. And when you think of goal, you're thinking of in 10 years' time, uh, here is where I want to be. Here is what I want to achieve. And 10-year goal, you have to break that down to five year slot and the five years you have to break down what do i do this year one year goal and monthly goal and weekly goal and daily goal so that i do today what i need to do that will get me to the next day i do this week what i need to do that will get me to the month i do this month what i need to do that will make me achieve what i need to achieve for the year and i am measuring measuring smart goals i am measuring them i'm seeing that i achieve the daily one i achieve the weekly one realizable realistic steps that i take and then it is time tested and it is time because i'm aiming at 10 years five years one year one month we need to do that but if you are in companionship with loafers how are you going to make that number six the counterfeit of love Love is a great word, but you know, anything that comes into the hands of a man who is black on the inside, black on the outside, any good thing that comes to the hands of a dirty person, they turn that thing into something undesirable. There is counterfeit money counterfeit currency there is counterfeit love the people say i love you i love you tell the truth you're lost after heart that's not love that's counterfeit and what makes people to stop that they cannot look at their goals anymore and they cannot focus on their goals anymore as they're growing up and their goals should be growing up with them they have the counterfeit of love which is lost and now number seven the covenant with lords of losers there are people that make themselves lords they call themselves by different names on different campuses they call themselves by different names in different communities actually they are gangs. Actually, they are secret cults. Actually, they are in the power, in the throes, in the claws of the power of darkness. And they are lords over losers. They make themselves lords over the people that lose in life. And if you get into covenant with the lords of losers, you are gone. But today, you come back. Yeah. It is done. Yeah. I will see you on the top. Yeah. Number two. Number two, we're looking at the breaking of limits for newborn youths. The breaking of limits for newborn youths. The Lord makes the newborn you higher. If you are born again, you are higher. Your brain is not affected by marijuana. You should do better. Your mind is not clogged with worldly things, nightclubs. You should do better. You have more time on your hand that you can spend and do something great because the other people, the other young people, a lot of things make demand on their time. And now that you are born again, I'm happy to walk with you. I'm happy to say, this is the way, walk ye therein, and by the grace of God, others have got there. 
you are the next on the line in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 therefore if any man let me say if any youth let me say if any boy let me say if any girl if anyone be in christ he is a new creature old things have passed away old regrets a passed away. Old failures are passed away. Old hindrances are passed away. The old life. If there is a little hurdle, only six inches high. Old time will stumble on the hurdle of six inches. Old life, if there was a little hurdle, only one foot would stumble and fall. But now, as we become new, new strength, new ability, the hurdles are still there, old hurdles, but we're new, new strength. And we have a new jumping strength. We overcome the hurdles now. Because now all things have become new in your life. Yeah. Your thinking is now new. Yeah. Your aspiration is now new. Yeah. And the passion inside you to be what God has created you to be, that is now new. Yeah. In Galatians chapter 6, Reading here from verse 15, it says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature, a new creature. The Lord will wash you thoroughly. Now, what new creation? When he says a new creature, it's a new creation. What new creation are you going to have now? And then that will take you to the place the Lord has ordained for you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Number one, new desires. New desires. You know, we, there were things we desired when you were a little baby you desired toys if you were still desiring that at 20 that's strange that's strange the toys of the little life when i was a child i thought as a child i desired as a child i moved and the child but now that i become a man i think of other things number one new desires number two a new direction a new direction you see there are many roads in the city there are rough roads and there are good roads now that you are a new creature what do you have you have a new direction all those inventors what direction did they follow all those good godly men and women what direction did they follow all those achievers what direction did they follow a new direction number three is a new diligence a new diligence there are many uncompleted buildings in every town you know why the builders were not diligent to see their construction to the end of the building and there are many lives like that they start something good but they don't continue they're not diligent they're not firm in their purpose but now the quality of the new creature is that we have a new diligence this good thing that has started in your life you will be diligent you will carry on you will not be up and down to and fro that you cannot do something to the very end you know you start a course C O U 
R-S-E, you start a course, and then uh, after reading a few chapters of the books, you pack up. That's not diligence. You start a good project, and you funded it. And then, uh, after you spent almost a fortune, there's something that shifts your mind to another thing. That's not diligence, but you have uh, something. You have a decision. You have a desire. And you have uh, the determination that you are getting through. I'm going through. I'm going through. Whatever happens, I am going through. You are going through in Jesus' name. <laughs> Number four is a new dedication to duty. You know, we'll not always love duty. We'll not always enjoy duty. The enjoyment will be at the end of the achievement. But whether we enjoy it or not, the original excitement, when we go to that situation, you understand? Uh, let me illustrate with our students who get, you know, you've uh, written the exam and you, you were eager and then you saw that you passed and now you're admitted to the college, to the institution, to the university. What excitement you have. On the first day you enter in there, you have excitement. Now you start the classes. And what you're hearing in the first class, I never heard of that. They never taught me that in my secondary school and now i thought the mind will go from the known to the unknown this is totally strange and different you are not the one to lecture the lecturer you are the one to stay there and say this is what is before me i must take this and run with it you must not allow the excitement you had at the beginning when you entered you must not allow that excitement to die down, you have a new dedication to duty. Number five is a new dynamite. A new dynamite. Uh, there must always be a dynamite inside you that whatever is coming there and is building up with stratas and eventually will be a rock and you'll not be able to move on. There's a dynamite on the inside that will blow everything discouraging, blow everything away from your life so that as you're moving on, you move to the next level, there is a second degree dynamite. Dynamite. And you move to the next level, there is a third degree dynamite. And you move to the fourth level, and there is a fourth degree up to degree four dynamite in your life. That no matter where you are, and no matter the thing that is building up that could weigh you down, there is always an appropriate dynamite that will blow everything away. It will start today. Amen. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, the breakthrough beyond limitations as noble use. Beyond limitations. Had we come to that? Let's look at the example of Jesus in John chapter 4, reading from verse 34. In John chapter 4, reading from verse 34, Jesus says unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. My will, my plan, my decision, my aspiration, my joy, my satisfaction is to do the will of him that sent me. The father that sent him had set the goal, had revealed his will, had showed his plan and purpose. And he said, I align with that. I agree with that. I Go with that and to finish his work. He woke up every morning and then he went to a solitary place to pray and was asking how far 
have I gone in the work he gave me to do? How much is left to finish the work he gave me to do? You wake up every morning and you ask yourself, what did he give me to do? What goal, what purpose, what plan, what will did he have for me? How far have I gone? How much remains? You look at if there are different projects you are handling. Project A, how far to the end? Project B, how far to the end? Which one needs more resources? Which one needs more attention? And which one needs more concentration? And which one needs more supervision? You're looking at that in your life so that you will know how far you are to the finishing of the work. Now, it's not just that we finish the period. You know, many people can finish. We are supposed to be there for three years, and you spent two years already. And it's not just saying it remains one year. It remains one year. No. The thing you have to do for those three years, how much of those things have you accomplished? That's what you mark. That's what you measure, and that is what you want to go through. And Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. You will finish. Amen. We're looking at the word of God, the most in our lives. It tells us in, uh, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verse 30, it says, And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? There is a must in our lives. Look at uh, chapter 14. Verse 22, in chapter 14, verse 22, it tells us there, and it says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, you see, in our lives, eh, there must be some very important compulsory things, not optional that must be done he says we must through the through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of god you will enter Amen. into kingdom victory into kingdom triumph into the kingdom as a conqueror in jesus name must you need to write this down m u s T, minimize unprofitable speech thoroughly. If we're going to do what the Lord has assigned, there is a must, M-U-S-T, you minimize unprofitable speech thoroughly. M, number two now, mortify unclean sensuality truthfully. They take time. Anything that takes your thought, takes time. Anything that takes and seizes your mind, takes time. Anything that will monopolize the function of your brain, all those things, they will hinder you. Because you have only one brain, only one mind, only one heart, only one pursuit. And once that is divided... You are not going to achieve much. Therefore, you mortify unclean sensuality truthfully. Number three is to maximize undeniable success trajectory. Success trajectory. That is the trajectory, the path that leads us to success. Maximize that. I did that. It succeeded. How did I do that? And the how you did that, maximize that. Repeat that. Number four, master uncontrollable self totally. Master uncontrollable self totally. You see that the most in our lives, something is happening there. 
and it's none of my business, it's none of your business, and the people to take care of the thing there, uh, they are there. And they're already looking into that, but there's this uncontrollable self, I must be there. What's happening there? What's happening there? And then uh, you leave your work. By the time you come back to that work, you have lost connection with the, uh, with the progress you ought to make. Number five is to model on debatable salvation transparently. The salvation you have, you model that or the salvation in the Bible. And you do that transparently and the Lord will assist you in Jesus' name. What the most in your life, the most in my life, in your life, number six, maintain upward steps tenaciously. Not that you take two steps forward and three steps backward. Not that this week the achievement, this is commendable. And this is wonderful because you've taken three steps forward and then the following week in your time of resting and time of, you know, a kind of uh, dissipating uh, all your energy and everything you take for steps backward. No, you are maintaining upward steps tenaciously. And now number seven, uh, motivate on steady subordinates transformationally. The people around you, it's not only that you are successful, your life inspires them. Your life uh, makes them to have uh, aspiration and ambition. And they say, as I look at, you know, he never does any redundant thing. He never does any un unimportant thing. He never does anything you know, that you will say, well, yes, it's time of wisdom, it's time of foolishness. He does everything that most him forward, he motivates me, he encourages me, he inspires me that at the God who has helped him will help me. You will become an example to many other people, a light bearer to many other people, an encouragement to achieve for many other people. People will come to you and say, Tell me the secret of your life. And just looking at you, they will get the secret. And everything you have learned today, they have motivated us. We should not be unsteady anymore. And we who are subordinates will now come to the top. I must... I must, I must, and there will be a breakthrough beyond limitations in your life in Jesus' name. Why don't you rise up now and let the heavens know and let the heavens hear that we have heard something and we're taking that thing out of this place, a must in my life, a must in your life, a duty, a devotion, and diligence in your life that you will sail through in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. If there's anything you need to repent of, anything you need to repair, Anything you want to readjust, tell the Lord, Lord, help me. You believe. You believe in God. You believe in his goodness. He is good to all. He is good to all. You believe in his grace. His grace is available for you and for everyone. You believe in the goal, the goal he has set before you, which you have aligned with. You believe you are now a goal getter. You believe in his guidance. He will guide you with his word, with his spirit. He will guide you with your conscience, with your conscience. He will guide you. 
now address the most in your life. You minimize unprofitable speech thoroughly, completely. Mortify unclean sensuality truthfully. You maximize undeniable success trajectory. The Lord has answered your prayer. The Lord has answered your prayer. Say it now. The Lord has answered my prayer. The past is forgotten. The past is forgiven. A new thing starting. In every life today, in Jesus' name. Welcome, brother. Welcome, sister, to the high, limitless achievement that he has for you in life. Raise up that hand, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for the revelation you have given us. We are asking, O oh Lord, in your life, we we'll begin today in Jesus' name. Anything in the past that will hinder, that will hold us down, that will limit what you have ordained for our lives, Lord, we pray by the blood of Jesus, wash them away in Jesus' name. Do something new Amen. in every life. Amen. I pray, Lord, no regrets anymore. Amen. No looking back anymore. Amen. No sorrows anymore. Amen. We pray that you renew us from the inside to the outside in Jesus' name. Amen. Take every sin away. Take every sickness away. Bring success, significance, satisfaction to every life in Jesus' name. I pray every life will be pleasing to God and pleasing to heaven. That our pursuit will get you that destination, that destiny that the Lord has earmarked and ordained for everyone in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, make your people, everyone without exception, to quit the past, to focus on the future. And everything that is needed from heaven from earth, grant to everyone. Make a success of every life. Beyond the limitations of the past, take us through. Take us up. 